We join the Super Legit crew before the show as we test our guest. Now, this is a question I ask every guest to put them on the spot and make them feel extra uncomfortable, and they <laughs> usually answer no. Uh, did you happen to have a chance to listen to any episodes of the podcast so that you know how it works? Yes. Whoa! Oh, what? Already yes. our favorite guest ever. Oh, uh-huh. my God. Yeah. That shoots you straight into the top five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. have one up on most of the cast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> episode of the super legit podcast i am your host jet kaufman and i am so happy to be back here with some of my favorite are you people. happy jet? i am are happy you? i are am you? yes are yes you? are you I'm josh happy and i'm fulfilled i'm super but, excited We're, i'm happy to do this man I'm oh this last show let's go Break out from josh spence wait, i love it wait this is the last show yeah, yeah i just heard wait, that too what? Oh, yes. right. yeah no, 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 this no, is no. Our last We're show. Are we wrapping this up? <laughs> We're doing that's why I'm so happy. No, I missed I felt bad I missed the last show, so like I missed you oh, guys. Uh, I'm oh, ready to go. You're out for that oh, one. That's right. Oh, oh, copy that. that yep. Oh. Yep. All right. Well, yeah. You we are... and let's while we're on it, you were greatly missed as well. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do want to make Thank that you. very clear. And that yes. we all that remember that me. you missed it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so you've been hearing Josh Spence already. Let's go around the horn for the others. We've got Chris Sanders. I uh, would rather not be here. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Michael Boozer. Here begrudgingly. <laughs> Jen Burton. I have nowhere else to go. <laughs> Chris Compton. I am a recording. <laughs> and my co-host, who nope. is here tonight, oh, can we... Michael Hyman. No, I'm under what? house arrest, so this is the best option for me. I'm hearing a protest here, um, and I'm curious where it's going. What's up, Josh Spence? I mean, did we... Are we... Is that a thing now that he's the co-host? Is that established now? now? Currently in this Why, episode? Are we sure? Are we're, we sure that he's the co-host? Over 90 Did episodes we... in and you're you're rechecking this fact? I mean, we try new things and then if it doesn't work, maybe after 90 episodes we try, you know, it's not working, I think. So, all right, let's let's let's, let's throw this out to a vote because we, we love voting on the co-host on this show. Um, all those who think that this experiment of Michael Hyman co-hosting the show for the last roughly 90 episodes, uh, say I. Wait, was that even a question? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Was, the question. Was clear what the <laughs> one of the other is. <laughs> so you, know what? you know what? I, I, Jet, I, Jet, I, for, I, for a process violation, let's just move forward. I'm the co-host. Yes. We'll table it no! for a week. That's great. Yes, you yeah. were going to just stick a pin in that one, yeah. move on, yeah, we'll try it again. Best. When wow. when the host's brain is functioning at a yeah, more complete level. Absolutely. Great. Agreed. All right. It's settled. Yes. Uh, Michael Hyman, who is our guest this week? Oh, Jet, I am very excited to introduce our guest this week. Uh, her name is Frances Collier. Welcome hey, to the hi. Super Legit Podcast. Hey, so excited to have you. Yay. Oh, I just, this is a really lovely green room. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yes. I hope so. Uh, you yep, picked it yep. out, I hope. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's fabulous. I wanted to thank you so much, Francis, for going with me to Lowe's to pick out the shade of green because there were so many to co- to, to pick from and I, I was know. lost. Well, uh, you know what? When you came up with Frost Sage, I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? You, you are lost. You yeah. are lost. <laughs> I know. I know. I knew it the moment it came out of my mouth. Is like, I, 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 I don't know what I'm doing here. Ugh. Mm-hmm. I'm glad Such you said it. We had a similar talk. You tried to sell me on it. I said, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, yeah. I don't take his advice very well. I needed at least one more person to give me the information, and then I like it clicked. Co-host. So, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, the shade I had my money on was 1970s kitchen appliance. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> picked a better green. Avocado. You picked a better green. green. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Classic though. Absolutely classic. classic. And it's like 70s avocado too, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Which is a shitty gray green. <laughs> yeah, it was a different breed of avocado then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It it things were fresh. All the paints from the 70s arrive looking old no matter yeah. what they are they just yes. like they have dirt mixed in to me it does that okay. way <laughs> i think the official color is called next day guacamole <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, mm. oh i can picture that <laughs> hey speaking of the 70s do you guys remember when pistachios were red 
What? Oh yes, my God. yes, and girls would put them on their nails as yes. fingernails. Yes, yes, yes I remember wait. that. Wait, I women this. would put the actual nut on their nails the, or the, the shell? shell? I'm assuming shells, yeah. Kids. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Kids. okay. Kids. Kids. No. Yes. Well, you, Don't you ever say the, the, the outside one, not the actual <laughs> possession itself. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Okay. Yeah, okay. And they, were, they, were, they had that red dye on them. Yes. That would, like, poison you. And yes. And your mouth yes. would be, like, Red? This yeah. is the weirdest <laughs> question because this was such a normal thing and then it disappeared like I don't know if it was overnight or what because I forgot about it entirely. It's been what 20, 30 years? I don't because know. Because the quality of pistachios got better that they didn't have to cover them up with that red powder anymore because they weren't all bruised and, and horribly. That, was that uh, the deal? Oh, that geez. was why they were they were discolored. So was it they, that uh, or oh. did the dye get outlawed? I think it's the red right. dye. Wasn't it red dye number yes. three? That's right. like I was going to say, was it the same one from Eminem? I believe yeah. it was red dye number nine, number nine, number nine, <laughs> number nine, <laughs> number nine. Number nine. Yeah, I think they just outlawed the dye in California yeah. like yeah. today. Right, so... yeah. They did it again, yes. Yeah. It, won't, it just won't stay outlawed. Uh, dye hey, won't uh, Michael, quit. I would love for you to hear what our question is for this episode. I would love Ooh. for you to hear it from my mouth. <laughs> and the question this week is when not if when you win the lottery what are you doing with your hundred million dollars oh man josh we know you've you've been thinking about this i i, I think about it every tuesday mm. wednesday and saturday when i foolishly buy mega million and powerball lotto tickets i do it religiously all the time because I, all you gotta do is just win it once. Hey, I, gotta I don't care win, the right? odds. And like, if I if I won, like, so many kids are going to college. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be everybody's best uncle. Like, I just I'm gonna it, be going back to college if you win. I'm making. I, yeah, I'm making. I'm buying a college if you win. Oh, oh, I, I should have bought say, a college. Yeah, yeah, no, yes, I'm buy, I'm buying a college. What <laughs> cheap ass saying, college are you buying for like fifty million? <laughs> because you can't spend the whole oh, no, 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 million. No, 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 no. I I I'm going to win like the two point five billion dollar. Oh, yeah, that's smart. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. Good choice to like, win the larger one. Because yeah. when I have the choice your... to win, I'm choosing the biggest one, not not the smallest yeah. one. Yeah. Come on, Sanders. But two point five billion will only cover your your football program for one year. That's yeah. almost the coach's salary right. now. Um, That's right. Yeah. 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 right. I do like people are telling you to be realistic about your lottery dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cop, did you? That's what we do here on the pod. We take right. any fantastical idea and just like cram it into right. as boring reality as possible. Yeah. I miss Steven. Where is he? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I like. I like that you described it as you play it religiously because it's like pretty much the same thing. Oh, right? You give like a negligible, like an appreciable but negligible amount of your money, <laughs> and it allows you to hold on to an idea that at some unspecified point in the future, everything is going to be great. The difference, yeah, yeah. The only difference is this helps education. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but like I, I, I told the story on the podcast before, but. I had a neighbor uh, when I first moved to L.A. It was like this like 70 year old Mexican guy. And every every week he would buy lottery tickets. And I was like an insufferable 20 year old asshole. <laughs> uh, and so I was like, you know, oh, you know, you've got a better chance of getting struck by lightning than winning the lottery. <laughs> I hope you talked uh, like that. <laughs> Thanks for yeah, yeah, that's I, I still do. I have a filter uh, on my mic. Um, but uh, but what he said to me was like. I don't play it to win. I play it so I can walk around all week with a million bucks in my pocket. Yep. And I was like, oh, you know how to be happy. I right. am just a sad 20-year-old <laughs> asshole. Um, so, like, I'm a firm believer in that. Like, whatever gets you that feeling is worthwhile. Super. I'm excited. I've never I've never met a lottery consultant before, but I, I figure you're gonna you're gonna help me yep. um, achieve my dreams now that that I've got the money. I mean, this is just I. I just more want to I say, first Jet, I'm so glad that you've made me your best friend, your lotto consultant. Like I, I like that we have officially bestowed that title to me on how to officially spend 
your money. It is fantastic. When I checked your LinkedIn profile, it said your job title now was lottery consultant, which I had no idea that's even what you did for a living. Right. You didn't really talk about what you did for a living. It was like uh, you won the lotto, and then all of a sudden, I became a lotto consultant. I love how life works that it's way. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. The certification process must have just lined up just perfectly for me, I guess. I don't know. So um, here's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, please. I know please. you have ideas, me, but again, I'm the consultant. I've got so, let me so many ideas, yeah. Right. Like, let's start with the pool, right? Let's get the water out. Let's put in silver dollars like Scrooge McDuck, and then we can go swimming in a pool of quarters like in DuckTales. That's the dream. That's that's the first thing I see for you. Okay. Oh, I've, okay. So first I was thinking you meant we, we would, like, uh, uh, surface it with silver dollars. You mean just fill the pool with silver yeah, dollars? Yeah, like 40-foot high dive into a pile of metal and money of, of dollars. Yes. That sounds like a concussion. That like, sounds like a good time. Concussions. You can't hear a concussion while the theme song is playing. Life is like an airplane. No, 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 no. You know, come on. You know, I the- feel like I'd hear that if I had the concussion like 24 seven as a result of that. Okay. You know what? I'm sorry. I, I, you know, you're here to give me ideas. Right. They're probably not going to all be winners. Let's, let's hear well, the next you one. You go. I went. You go. We'll go back and forth. Right. See, I think I'm going to elevate these ideas. I mean, I was thinking, you know, mm-hmm. just, you know, it's time to buy like an electric car. What? An electric you know, I, I think, car? Yeah, but like a nice one, you know, no. like like uh, like a, you know the 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 uh. Kia uh, EV6 or something. You know, one of the ones that's you know, sure. it's put the money into. I'll get the top, you know, the top right. model. You know, the, well, the, yes, of course, all the feature packs and everything. But like, you know, time to time to uh, uh, commit uh, to a good. Car. I got I got to stop you right there. What? Electric vehicle, yes, what? but. but what? You need one that has 1.7 gigawatts or whatever. You need the DeLorean. You need the one that goes back in time. It's it's 1.21. I'm sorry. It seems like you put at least an extra half a gigawatt into this (laughs) over the recommended levels. Yeah. And as you can see, your Mr. Fusion is completely melted. Is there any way, like, I can get, like, a double fusion? Like, is there any way we can go sideways in time instead of just back in time? I think that's the extra gigawatt it's for. Hey, I'm a time machine mechanic. I'm not a wizard, okay? Look, this is you have a flux capacitor here that is completely blown out. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to level with you. The parts are going to be cheap, but the labor is going to be pretty pricey. Okay, so we just go with the 1.21 gigawatt one, okay? So the first DeLorean was a mistake. We'll get a proper one, but we can go back in time, and then we can do the Biff Tannen thing, but for good reasons, not for Biff Tannen reasons. Okay, all right. So we, we've already, we've blown, we've blown a million dollars of this so far, which <laughs> any other time in my life, I would be freaking the fuck out about that. Right, right. now, of course, But that's you're Jet McDuck amount. now. I, I, I really like don't that. like the Jet nickname. McDuck. I know, I know. You keep you keep going for that one. Um, Scrooge Kaufman. I mean, you can. Oh the God, no. is your oyster. No, it could be no, one of those that's two. That's not a combination. I feel good about. <laughs> no, not in this climate. No. Um, all right. Okay. We're just gonna go. We're gonna go back to the bench here. At this point, okay. Let's. Sure. I'm sorry. I need to make other smart decisions here. Right. You're right. No. Let's go for a house. I need wealth. a house. Right. I need something. It's you know, it's going to be generational mm-hmm. wealth. Right. You know, assuming we don't spend too high, and then it collapses. This has happened a lot, but yeah, get Sky a high nice house. High, yes. uh-huh. And and but realistic, you know, something realistic. Uh, 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just okay. like I, I don't need a lot. Like a two, three. Let's go three bedrooms because I'll want an right. office mm-hmm. uh, in a guest room. Right. You know, and two car garage, and that's and it. then in the middle of the night, it transforms. And it says, I am Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots. And then you have like a built-in friend with you. And then on the inside, it's, hello, my name is Jarvis. And he does all the Stark industry stuff. And you have two roommates living with you. You're giving shelter to robots. That's so nice of you, Jet. I mean, I'm just, I'm now caught up on the mixing of properties here. Optimus is, is like, a, depending on, on where you go, it's like a Peterbilt truck. Or, you know, again, the truck, now we have a house. But we've also got, we've got Jarvis from Mark. So you guys are looking for another roommate? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, so just, uh, your ad said that the house turns into a transformer. I don't understand yeah. what that means. Does that mean extra rent for me? Because I just need a room <laughs> for like, I, I mean, I really can't pay more than $700. Honestly, month, so. the house is supposed to be paying rent, but he can't work because he has to stay here in this spot so we can live in him. It's Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. I got some bad advice from, uh, from you know, he's a professional. He swore he's a professional, good friend of mine. Anyway, we made a bad investment. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Optimus. I didn't mean to, to call you a bad investment. You've been a wonderful friend of the house. Thank you. Wow. that Your house talks to you. That's really wild. Yeah. Can I ask yeah. another question? Why is your Please. swimming pool filled with silver dollars oh, instead gosh. of water? Oh, because uh, I I was told there was a pool. The ad said there was a pool, but I can't get in there. There is a pool. You can. Uh, it takes a little bit of it takes some shimmying, I gotta say. Uh, but you can you can work your way in there, and it is it is a sensation. I gotta say, it is an interesting sensation. Better at night. Uh, not so good in the summer. I got a bad vibe about all of this. Oh. Uh, sir, uh, your house just mm-hmm. stepped on my house. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. We've been working on uh, we've been working on the the servos on this. See, it's been a bit of a work. Oh my god, so much money. I think he's, so much he's money. pissing oil on on my roof right now. Opti, Opti. We talked about this. I mean, can Opti. you get your house in order, please? I'm trying. I trust me. I'm trying. You have you ever told a house to heal before? Like it takes some work. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean the, to snap at you. The neighborhood shouldn't be in the middle of whatever's going on between you and your house. Trust me. Trust me. I know. But you know, there's stuff at you that goes on in your house that I don't need to see. Hey, uh, I'm glad you guys uh, have given this a uh, a think over. I'm glad we're gonna have a sit down here at the HOA. And uh, apparently, uh, you as neighbors and you forgot how to treat each other's. So apparently, your house is walking around stomping on other people's house, and her house got stomped. Hey, that's not nice. How are we gonna How are we gonna suss this out? How are we gonna figure this out? This ain't right. What are we gonna do? We gotta squash this. I, I mean, that seems like an insensitive choice of word given the situation that just oh, happened. Oh, hey, yeah, hey, whoa, sorry. Sometimes things come out. It wasn't. I didn't. I was. No offense, no offense, no offense. I mean, you know, uh, uh, there's no fence between our, our homes right now, and I feel like that might have helped, and I the, the fence line was on my neighbor's property. You know, you were responsible for putting up a fence. Whoa, hey, whoa, hey, we're going to stay away from you messages? It's going to be strictly I messages. This is an HOA of respect, mutual uh. respect. I can't have you in here pointing fingers. Aside from the fact, when you point a finger, you got tree phone pointing right back at you, huh? Huh? Right, right. No, I'm sorry. If there's one thing everyone knows HOAs for, it's for respect. Uh, my apologies. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I Look, you got to understand, I'm in a tough spot here. I got some bad advice, bad investment. Yeah, I've seen that topiary out front. Oh. Fucking sheep? Are you kidding me? What year is this? I, yeah, who, who, who starts a bush in the sheep? And did you see the gnomes? I didn't buy the gnomes. Do you know what my gnome budget is? It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Wait, you have a gnome budget? I do. I do. I feel I like this sit down is over. Pay her whatever she wants. <laughs> Maybe we dreamt too small with the Autobot houses, okay? And you what? put you you were you were what? you said yourself I am worried about cross contamination with the franchises. So you know what we do? You buy a town. And you know who runs Barter Town? Uh, uh, I run Barter. Huh? Jet McDuck runs Barter Town, my man. Okay. Buy a town. That That's nickname's growing on me, given the alternative. Um, yeah, <laughs> baby. That's what I'm talking about. And I am town. Optimus Josh. This is great. You don't think this is too much? You don't think this is just going a little too far? A town? Yeah, right? And then here's the thing. We could actually elevate it and then we can not like not like sokovia because you don't want it to be marvel but we can have it float in the clouds we can make a cloud city uh mr mayor mr mayor uh, uh i got a question for you uh, my name my name's uh, uh ted williamson Bottertown gazette um uh, what do you have to say to the allegations that you have lifted this town off of the ground but you have not lifted the sewer system attached to this town off the ground, and that uh, leavings are now descending on other cities in the area. I'll take my answer off you. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Mistakes were made, um, but not by me. Uh, I have a consultant. Uh, he he advises me on these types of decisions, um, and this is uh, this is a thing I, I pay him for. I pay him. An exorbitant amount of money to make these these tough decisions, uh, and he, he he failed me here. He just he, he, he uh, yes yes I'm sorry. I, I will happily take another question now. Yeah, let's yes, move on. I'm Lillian yeah. Johnson, who used to live next door to you. Oh God! When we were down on 
already yeah, went on the land, but now your house is... Well, you told me I should move to the clouds. I did that. Your house is still stepping on my house. <laughs> okay. In the clouds. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I've got a question here. Okay, great. I will happily change to someone else. My name is. Uh, my name is Lando. <laughs> uh -huh, I used to uh -huh. run this place, but yeah. you came in here and you took over. I'm not happy about it. So, any women around here? <laughs> okay, so here's what we do. We take the Cloud City, we put it back in the dirt, okay? We take the Autobot houses, we put them back in the houses. And then, because this whole situation is messed up, uh -huh. we go to mm -hmm. another dimension. We go to oh this place called Outworld, and we live as ninjas, my man. We fight in a tournament to the death, and we're like prize fighters for some reason. How much would it take me to just buy you out at this point? $5,000. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> that would be a well spent five days. Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> I, if only I had started there. <laughs> oh my god. Episode uh. still young, baby. You can make that happen, Jeff. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, I couldn't fathom that much lotto money. So, like, yeah, I think whatever I have, it's, I'm really just getting rid of as much of it as I can. I mean, what's and you can't you can't take it with you, right? Like I just, I would I would honestly just want to see everybody be happy and successful. You can't take it with you, but you also can't predict when you would be leaving to take anything with you. You don't so know that. Sanders. You have to manage. <laughs> uh, are you planning on offing yourself shortly after winning the money? Because you can't predict your death, is what I'm saying. <laughs> so you have to I'm still be. You have to still be responsible Depends with on your, what you're money. your money. on. Because even know. even a hundred million dollars seems like a shitload of money, yeah. and it really isn't that. You can much run through that just when you I'm fast. If you're you know, I'm going to wow. disagree that a hundred million dollars isn't a significant <laughs> yeah. amount of money. You know, show uh, me the hundred million, and then let's see how quickly I can spend. I, it. Everything <laughs> like, is relative. The way like the way that you want to like how generous you are as a person, Josh. You like that money. You have already spent billions in your head on. Everyone in your life and everyone Molly's that you've everyone. never even met. Yeah. So, like, even if you did win the billion dollar jackpot, like, everyone that even like turned and made eye contact with you, you'd be like, here's $10,000. Just because. <laughs> that? Ooh. Yeah, you can. I, I honestly do, I do think the foolish, foolish, foolish thing would, I would just open a huge improv space just yeah. for everybody to play. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have to worry about making a single dime off that place just yeah, but that would not that have much, to because so. improv is not for profit not by design yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just huh i wonder why we're not making my i don't know but next person up yeah king 10 here we no, go but the, i mean no, that is that is the beauty of having a lot of money like that in a situation like that is in theory if it's if it's excessive you can set yourself up with the, the basics of, OK, I own the house, I own the car, I own these things. I put X amount of money aside to make sure that I'm covered for retirement. And then if you want to be the crazy eccentric person is like, and now I will open a theater that is free. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you could do that. That's well, that's what used to happen with yeah. our millionaires, right? Yeah, yeah right. They, they, they used, used to be to philanthropists. Of yes. the right. art. The eccentric yeah. philanthropists. That's right. That's yeah. what used to happen. Yep. We, they, the person would get their, all of their needs met, get solid mm -hmm. on their home, and then go, I'm going to fund beauty. I'm yeah. going to fund art. I'm My going pet to project that is that, that I believe will save the world in some silly way that really matters to a lot of people. Yes. I mean, yeah. Carnegie Hall. Who's that named after? Exactly. <laughs> right. right. The somewhere guy. along the lines, uh, the just hoarding yeah um yes. stashing stashing wealth and just accumulating as much as yeah. you can and buying another house and another house and well, another house for and, and what what replaced that was like you know wrigley and you know now crypto.com and you know staples and like all of the you know, corporations and then and it was also replaced with and how can we make as much money as we can off of this venture versus right. you know enriching people's lives well it used to be that we were concerned about the quality of citizens lives <laughs> yes yeah. and that we, and we wanted to feel have pride in the city 
the town that we had, that we wanted these attractions. We wanted, we want, and it wasn't about the money. It was about the pride sure. that we could have mm-hmm. as, in, in a civic way. And mm-hmm. we don't have that anymore. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have to be 100% honest. Um, I, I really, as soon as we're done recording tonight, I'm going to go on to Vistaprint and I want to see how it looks on a business card to say, Josh Spence. Patron of the arts, like <laughs> I just, I just think that like, like I'm already thinking, ooh, if I, if I, billionaire or whatever, I'm that's gonna be my job title, patron of the arts and tamale cook. And, oh, yeah. Yes, delicious <laughs> tamale cook. I think at this point he's a tamale distributor. Uh, yeah, yes. Because yes. I was gonna say, I do think oh. he, your real, your real balancing act there would be: do you put the money into <laughs> the free improv theater or free tamales for everyone who wants them? But you could do both. That's at least, uh, you know, $500 right there. We could have an improv theater called Tamale House. In a very real way, um, although we may not be... I got to go buy more tickets. We may not be patrons of the arts, but all of us on some level have dedicated our lives to this. Like our lives are a love letter to the arts. And it obviously, you know, may not have garnered much... um, financial gain for us or for the arts. So you're saying but our lives are worth actually a lot of money. living it <laughs> in a very real way. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 We've all put money into these passions of ours and not gotten it back. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think mo- for the most part, we're not upset about that fact. I'm not even talking about the monetary item. I'm talking right. about the amount of effort and love and time. 100%. And just uh, like mental, like the amount of effort we put into this. I think is monumental in terms of like patron of the arts type yeah. uh, level. One thing I will say that is only the arts get this thrown at it, which is uh, why aren't you making money at it? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Like anything else, like nobody, like nobody who really loves travel gets told, well, why aren't you getting paid to go on vacation? Right. <laughs> nobody like, like you can like love to play golf and not be uh why aren't you playing? Why aren't you a pro golfer? Uh, but the arts is the only area where it's like, if you're not making money, you failed at doing something you love. It sometimes works against you, too, because what happens when you are an artist who starts out with the heart of an artist and doing it for the love of it, and then you get millions of dollars thrown at you, it changes Well, let me tell you, you. what that's I like. I think there's just... Um. <laughs> oh, <please>. uh, <laughs> we all know you're a secret millionaire. The person who comes to mind is Phoebe Waller-Bridge, you know, who created mm-hmm. Fleabag. Yeah. So she's like one of my heroes in terms of her writing and just how she started that as a one-woman play. And then she, she built rocks, it up yeah. and then it was bought and then it got turned into a television show. And it's this huge thing, right? And it's not that she's not working anymore. She still is working. But I heard this. So she got for from Amazon $16 million, an overall deal for $16 million, like when Fleabag came out. Mm-hmm. This might be apocryphal. And then she didn't make anything for like a very long time. She right. made nothing. Yep. And I think something happens to you. I think something... When you introduce money into artistic situations, I think it can get squirrely. Mm -hmm. I think it can affect your own connection to your own, why you're doing it. To your muse. To your muse, exactly. To your muse. And it can affect, um, uh, when I actually started making money as a writer, it affected how I thought about writing because it was always in service to the person that I was writing for. Right. And then it was yeah. like, is this mine even anymore? Right. Or am I looking at this person and going, what did they want? And then adjusting myself. And then I'd get to the end of that job and I'd be like, oh, I hated that. And I was like, right. I hated writing? What right. is happening? Like, that's not right. It so changes the it focus gets to, messy. is it marketable? And, you know, and that that is a... And it's not an unreal, especially if you're trying to make a living off of the thing you're doing, then okay, is it marketable is a relevant question. But if the thing you're doing is just creating art because you want art and you want to love a thing and create something that you love, then is it marketable should probably be one of the last questions you ask yourself because it compromises the art. Well, that's the like the advice people give you is like, you know, find what you love and do it for a living. <laughs> right. Which another way to say that is. Find what you love and make it feel like a job. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, which is like, you know, you know, I have, I, I grew up in a, like a town in South Carolina and I have a lot of friends who still live there and, uh, like I are in bands, like in their spare time. And they're like, you know, 
college professors or run a pizza shop or they have 8 million jobs and they do this and it's what they love. And they're not like trying to get signed. They're not trying to like make this a living because they're doing, ex they're doing what they want to do in exactly the way they want to do it. Yeah, a lot of people say, um, you know, they ask me what my dream job is and they think I'm being a smart ass when I say, um, I don't dream of labor, but dude, mm -hmm. I really don't. That's not something I aspire to. Like, I think yeah. that's such a wild. I th is that just strictly an American question where people say, "What's your dream job?" I or think is it that mostly like, is. It's yeah, a very American to thing to associate your job with who you are. Oh, I lived in Amsterdam for almost two years. Rag. People there do not ask what you do for a living. It right. is not the first thing they ask. At least my experience was. I've heard that from many other it people. It doesn't. Too, yeah. It doesn't like people do not give a shit about what you do. I've, I've been in Amsterdam. The first question they asked was like. Why do you do your hair like this? <laughs> <laughs> that actually is very true. Dutch people are extremely honest. Very direct. Yeah. 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 It's such an American thing. I think that's part of the problem of what Francis was speaking to, which is like our how we see money in relation to our self-worth mm -hmm. is like a disease in America. It just is on an individual level, but then also on like this corporate level. And it's really um sorry. Well, yeah, because like money, money as a whole do is a money is a is a social construct. Uh, but in a capitalist society, it's even that construct is is different than the larger construct sure. of money, where it is the it is the top of the pyramid. It is the sole purpose everyone has that that society has to feed yeah. the economy. That's why yeah. every American at the first thing they ask is, what do you do? How are you benefiting our economy? Mm -hmm. And it's the economy, stupid. And right. And ultimately, the lottery and the, uh, this question of uh, what are you going to do when you win the lottery is just a it's it's just fodder given to us pores from the few rich mm -hmm. to keep us dreaming and thinking that we actually have a chance at getting to the top of the pyramid that we don't. But I will in the lottery <laughs> speaking of uh capitalism driving everything in our society michael hyman i think we have a, a sponsor this week of course we do because capitalism drives everything in our society right Jeff? like you just said huh and this podcast we all know this podcast is driven on capitalism and this product picture this you're in spain you finally made it to the running of the bulls <laughs> except the bulls are too squat they're too small. You got there, you come from the Midwest, you're an American, and you thought, I thought the bulls would be bigger. Well, fear not. With Stretchable, these bulls will be American size for your red blooded <laughs> American vacation. You'll be seeing red when the bulls are bigger and longer than anything <laughs> you could ever imagine. It's exactly what you want in your head. Don't worry about those horns, they're not that sharp. You'll be saying, Ole! When you see these massive, long, giant bulls with their massive, long, giant bull testicles bearing down at you when they're driving down the street on their hooves into your face. Just listen to Antonio Banderas as he oh, describes yes. his Please. experience seeing the bulls change. Yeah, do the voice. <laughs> Oh, we don't have him? We use Stretchable on him, too? Oh, no! He's a bull? Oh! We'll never hear his beautiful voice ever again. Oh, that's incredible. Wow, Stretchable is out of control. Well, don't worry. You're going to be back on the next plane, back to Ohio, with that gauze, because guess what? Those hordes were sharp. Stretchable. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to hear a copy written by Ernest Hemingway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I think they they really buried the lead that uh, and Antonio Banderas uh, was the inspiration for Ferdinand the Bull. Uh, I, th I think that. Uh... Uh, hey, uh, Josh, I know you had your your hand up before the ad, but we had to get that in right on time. I know, a contractual for sure. obligation. Yeah, What's sure. up? My question was, and the, I think this is a true thing, hypothetically, if I won the lottery, what do you guys think is the over-under 
of how many times I would pay Dave Grohl to do a private concert for me. <laughs> and do you think he would eventually get annoyed at some point? Um, yeah, he'd probably just say no because yeah. he's got other shows to do and, and you know, other volunteer work and stuff. I think that, like, Beyonce will, like, come for you, like, for, like, a million dollars. So let's say that Dave Done. costs a million, right? You yeah. can only give him a hundred times, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or Josh, with a hundred million dollars, you could probably spend that money and manufacture a way for you to end up like at all the shows, VIP that you can naturally and organically become friends oh, with him. Yeah. And yeah. then eventually he'll play for you and you won't have to pay him. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Jet, Jet, can I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hijack this whole question a little bit. Let's do this <laughs> a little differently. It. Fucking go for <laughs> it. Because everybody Especially has because a... Sanders just established that the entire question's bullshit anyway. So, so, yeah. so here's the thing. So here's the thing, right? Yeah, because As he, I do. Right? <laughs> so let's assume I won the lottery. What would you want me to give you? Because I'm gonna give you whatever you want. Oh, so yeah. I have a hundred million dollars. Mm. What am I giving my family here? What do you guys want from me? I actually, I kind of want to piggyback off of what the the train we were just on. And so you're squashing what I that would too? Want, God no, no. Damn it, what I would want, I'm not squashing anything. What I, I would know. want right is for it. you to uh, achieve this dream of becoming friends with Dave Grohl, but instead yes. of you know hiring him for private concerts for you, more along the lines of Jet's recommendation, but I think you should disguise yourself as like a 12, 13-year-old boy who's like really good at drums and just Ooh. go to every show, <laughs> and eventually one of those shows, Ooh. he's going to call somebody up from the audience mm-hmm. to play drums with us real quick, and then you wow everybody with your drum skills, and they're totally convinced you're actually only like a 13-year-old boy. I've, I've looked over your medical chart, and I'm not going to lie, it's going to cost a lot of money to turn you into a 12-year-old boy. It's okay. It's it, it's below a hundred million dollars, right? Because I at okay. least need one million to get the first thing. So well, it's definitely going to cost a lot. You're going to have to uh, first. What we're going to do is we're going to shorten your legs. We're going to have to literally cut your legs and then remove. I don't parts even of like them. my leg. Okay, <laughs> good to know. Uh, we'll have to do the same to your arms. Then we're going to have to shrink your head somehow. And this is the hardest part because we're going to have to put your head into some sort of cone thing that I haven't even invented yet and then crush it uh, down into a smaller sized head. And I don't even know if you'll survive that, uh, to be honest. I mean, I'm willing to take the money. All right. It looks like you put an extra half a gigawatt into the head shrinker here. Uh, (laughs) And this is really doing serious damage. All right. Now, now you notice how how your eyes are inside your mouth. Uh, This is a clear (laughs) indication that this was overpowered. I look like that monster from Beetlejuice. It's not even funny. It has a name, you know. I don't know it, but it does. <laughs> I hear you're having trouble with those other doctors. Well, I've got an experimental formula that you just drink, and it'll shrink you down. Now, it's not permanent, so you'll have to pay me in perpetuity for a supply to drink this whenever you want to be shrunken to 12-year-old boy size. But here's my question, Dr. Snake Oil. Is it, like, just the... Is it just the drink, or is there, like, pills and supplements and other things I can do that'll do other things, or is it just the one thing? Oh, yeah! I got pills, too! You want some pills? I got pills, too! All right, so I'm not a doctor. I'm just a guy that sleeps out in front of your apartment. Um, But I will tell you this. (laughs) Fine, I don't judge. I have seen a a movie, classic movie, called Single White Female. And what I'm suggesting (laughs) is that you dress yourself up as Dave Grohl. You, You show up to his place. You become Dave Grohl. Okay. Huh? Are you with me so far? Oh, honey, good morning. I'm going to turn over in bed and kiss you. I can't wait. (gasps) (sighs) Who are you, you small child? (laughs) I am not a small child. My name is, in fact, David Eric Grohl. You know me from my time in Virginia where I was born. (laughs) Oh, oh my goodness. Why? You're supposed to be my husband. I am your husband. You're my wife, Jamie, my legally, lawfully wedded wife. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I was confused. (laughs) Is it it the short legs? Don't worry about the short legs. They'll grow back. No, you're not who I expected to be in the bed this morning. 
you took the wrong serum. You took the Dave Grohl serum. You didn't take the Dave Grohl serum. You took what? the little boy serum. Listen. No! I, I know no! they're almost the same color, but they're very, no they're distinct. Out. They're I distinct. I listen, Dave Grohl. listen, no, you got to remember, Shit. if you're going to replace them, you got to take the Dave Grohl serum. If you're going to okay. be friends with them, you take the little boy serum. Okay, but look, I need a third one for the wife. I need, what do you got for that? You want to be his wife too? Can I? <laughs> Wait, can I? I can, I can make you a third serum. It's going to be a remarkably close color, but it will be distinct if you look close enough. I have eyes coming out of my mouth, man. Tell me. Well, me yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I haven't bought the normal eye serum yet. That puts you back to normal. Look, man, the guy that was living out in front of my apartment is giving me better medical advice than you right now. Hey, it's me, the guy living in hey, front of your apartment again. Single white hey. female, yes. Are you, you going to finish that sandwich you're chewing on there? <laughs> uh... Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we like, I'm... Do you want the one for, you want me to feed you like a bird? Like, well, I prefer to feed myself because I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm just, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, unless that's something you're into, is it, uh, I, I mean, mean, I'm, I'm open to making money. Is, is that something you're, I mean, I clearly said no. I just want the sandwich. Uh, Mr. Grohl, Mr. Grohl, I, I tell Williamson, Potter Town Gazette, uh, <laughs> what do you say to, uh, accusations that you were seen vomiting a sandwich into the mouth of a homeless guy? In front of your apartment building. And congratulations on still living in an apartment, by the way. I'll take my answer off again. Uh, well, I was just trying to be someone's hero in that case where, you know, poverty is a thing in this world. So, like, the more I can, in times like these, I can help people learn to fly on their own. Barrington Berry of the uh, Barrington Press. Um, Follow-up question on that. Um, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of scuttle. Uh, wondering... Who run Bartertown? My question is, who run Bartertown? <laughs> Legit. Legit. <laughs> Just bringing that right back around. Has anybody uh, had any of that good Dave Grohl barbecue? No. Oh, no. Man. no. Not have even you? Josh? Have you, have, well, no? I, my friends have. I have and I haven't I have. been. You have? Okay, good. It's, it's, it's really good. Is it really good? <laughs> Where do you get Dave Grohl barbecue, by the way? Actually, what he does... All right, so... From Dave Grohl's Grill? I'll see myself out. So in- <laughs> if you're in his now? kitchen and... Right? And I, I am going to point out earlier, all of our advice to him of how to become friends with Dave Grohl was I'm basically notes. 80s movies about how to get the girl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, and really? they, they, All those yeah. movies ended with the protagonist successful, so... Yes. It was yes. like, it, it was 50% John Cusack and 50% John Hinckley. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Josh, tell us, tell us, uh, right tell us about your, there. your non-stalker spot. methods of getting uh, uh, Dave Grohl's barbecue. Well, it's not a non-stalker thing. I guess if you're just a fan of the Foo Fighters, you would know. Uh, his They have a <laughs> studio. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't mean it no, like I, that. I know. So their studio is called Studio 606, and it's in Northridge. And it's this huge compound. So when he does barbecue, he actually just opens up the compound gates, and it's you just see a big, giant, black smoker of every type of wow. barbecue you can imagine. And actually, in that area, there's a, there's a whole bunch of like uh, like tent cities, unfortunately. So you'll you'll actually see them come by and cook for the people right there. Like, so that, you posed that, as a, as an unhoused person. I didn't say that. I I, I, <laughs> I mean, I, let's see, if I said like yeah, would some... you guys judge me? How hard is it for you to evade all the closed caption um, cameras? Close caption. I mean, (laughs) I wear a shirt that says. The the cameras just describe what they're seeing. Uh, (laughs) So he he has one there, but he also did um, he did like a pop up tent in North Hollywood Mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago. Nice. That was that was pretty cool. But yeah, I I wear a shirt that says "Roadie" and says "I'm not crazy." And then um, (laughs) that'll do it. (laughs) And that'll do it. That's that's a hallmark of uh, not crazy is announcing (laughs) that you're not crazy. Uh, But I'm not crazy. (laughs) So what can I? I have a hundred million dollars. What can I give you guys? What do you guys want? Oh, jeez. Pay off my house. I I don't get something else. I'm already paying off y'all's houses. I I want something fun. Oh, man. I don't know. We're all practical people. I just want rent and groceries until I have to retire. You're done. done. What's next? I want just something fun. You know what I do? If like, because here's the thing. Like, the one control, one of the huge controlling elements in our world (laughs) is money, right? Like, that's such a controlling element. Like, if you have, um, if you have un, unfeathered access to money, you basically have freedom. Um, the only thing that's really holding me back is like healthcare. 
Like the reason I have yeah. a job is because cool. I need health care. Yeah. And uh, health care in this country is tied to your, your job. So that's why I am tied to a job that isn't necessarily my dream job. Because if you have the job labor. that has health care. Right, yes. And that's why I have the job. So like for me, like if I did have that kind of access to money, I would travel. That's the one thing I would yeah. do. Like I would yeah. change nothing else about my life, I don't think. Mm -hmm. You'd call yeah, and like, travel a different hotel in a different country? Yes. Yeah, like a travel fund. Yeah, Aww. yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in with something that I think is is like definitely something Josh would appreciate and is closer to being just the fun answer. A bunch of different food subscription services. You know the like the both a combination of the fun ones stuff like say the the crazy treats from all over the world but right. like the most deluxe box that they've got but also like the cooking kits you know I I, I was on like Hello Fresh for a while not a sponsor of the show I don't understand why they won't uh, sponsor us but we'll work on it you know but like a cooking kit like a you know meat of the month club kind of thing uh. you know like various of the month clubs of just like foods and snacks and treats and drinks and whatever me. like that that I, I think is that. both something Josh would love to get me and I. I would love to receive. Did you say meat of the month? Is that yeah. really a thing? They, oh, yeah. issue, they send you different cuts, tomahawks. By the way, Christmas is coming up, so if you want to send me like a tomahawk steak for my birthday, <laughs> that's fine. Everybody you know, actually, I'm just going to cut into this real quick. Super. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, hi, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Galapagos. Um, this is my buddy, Sean Michael Loser. I promised him. How you doing, him, Mr. Galapagos? Nice to meet you. I promised him that I would do travel. Like, he wants to travel, and it's I am. true. A, he promised. He said it. He gave me his word. And I am an eccentric patron of the arts. So I want to he send He calls this, me Art. Stop it, Art. You know your name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's me. I want to send him back in time. That's what I want to do. Um, hold on. I'm going to put the brakes on that. As a person of color, I cannot go backward. I can only go forward. <laughs> what? No. no, sir. No, absolutely not. Hey. Absolutely not. <laughs> so I've got bad news. Uh, forward seems to be going backwards. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was kind of sort of a bell curve going on, which mm. is, by the way, related to this somehow. Yep. Uh, but but uh, yeah, I, I, I wish I had good news. Uh, it looks like the peak was an area we thought was a valley. Uh, and oh. so I, wa I want to be the first to apologize. This prognosis is uh, not good. No, no, no. Uh, it it's, um, it seems like uh, a fatal prognosis. Is is it looks gonna... like it? It's come down with an advanced case of internet, uh, <laughs> which seems to be mm. like if you've been to a bus station in Fayetteville, North Carolina. <laughs> imagine if that was president. Uh, that that oh. that's sort of what's happened. Wow. I, uh, is there is this a uh, right to die state? Can I uh, check out early? I, I I mean, if you're able to. To predict when you uh, look, look, every state's a right to die state because uh, <laughs> they're not going to arrest you. So, uh, as someone who will say is a doctor, um, uh, I can't give you the advice to do it. I can't give you the advice how to do it, but I can give you the advice that almost anything will do it. Can you give me a prescription that will do it? I cannot knowingly give you a prescription that will do it. I'm going to look the other way and slide this across the desk here. And you tell me if that's enough or should I keep sliding? Uh, yep, yep, that, that works for me. Uh, I, I assume I don't I'm see anything I'm so glad I kept that coupon from Arby's. I gotta say, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, we can do this, but, like, I, I wanted to, I wanted to pay for you to travel wherever you wanted. I thought back in time would be fun. I guess it's not fun. Oh, no, but no, the, you should but, study history. It's not, there's no, there's no fun about it. Um, I'd rather, if, if we're gonna, if my choices are either back or now, I would rather stay now, where at least only people with a, uh, a badge are allowed to legally kill me. Uh, Mr. Boozer, uh, welcome to Sideways in Time. Oh. Uh, I understand <laughs> that we didn't have anywhere else to go. Uh, I gotta be honest, there's not a lot to see. Uh, this looks like here, a, a refurbished Denny's. That's right. Uh, over yeah. here is the bathroom. Uh, okay. You can use that at your leisure. It does work. Over here we have a countertop. Uh, Wait, uh, oh, just a uh, point of order? Uh, yep. Is it... Is this unisex? Because there's only one yeah, bathroom here. Uh, well, you're the only person who's ever arrived uh, oh. uh, here right. in, in, in Sideways Time. So, uh, I, I got your ground rule double breakfast. You're saying that they just bring black people here. They, they brought me here. I don't, I don't know. I didn't ask to come I, here. They, I didn't ask 
ask Ava. I gotta be honest. Uh, you are the only two people who come here so far. Stop I... giving us rides and telling us we're coming here. You brought us here. I didn't. I just live in Sideways in Time, and I'm just supposed to show people around. That's my job. Uh, I don't sorry. know where when I am. This has gotten Wait. real weird. Do you guys want a burger? I'm, I'm sorry, what? Uh, well, we have a guy who makes burger. He's a robot. Listen, Jet, I, I look, I screwed up, okay? Like, you I, did. I, I, I should have made you my lotto consultant because I was previously your lotto consultant and I spent all your money. It's time for you to fix me. I tried to build Sean Michael Boozer. He went forward in time. You can't go back in time because everything's fucked. We tried to go sideways in time. There's a bad burger. Can we just help? Look, you're the smartest guy I know. Clearly not. Because what? what you don't realize is I fixed that lot. That wasn't a real lottery. I felt bad for you when I just gave you $100 million of my winnings. I thought I won that on my own. I figured you would On just, my own you, strength. You on would do own... all these wonderful things, wonderful things for yourself. Leave my winnings Those alone. Those are my lucky numbers. And... 12, 31, 8, 4, 23, and 7. I know. You tell me your lucky numbers every week. It was every easy for me to remember Tuesday, them. And, and, and I manipulated the machine that I showed you. I, that was a video that I made in the basement. I can afford really good production value. So I hired a crew, set it up in the basement. We did a whole thing so it looked real. We patched that through to your television and made it look like you won $100 million. And clearly I screwed up because you were doing terrible things with it. Francis? Yes? Do you think they're coming back for us or did they forget about us? <laughs> Uh, I st it's cold and lonely in here. I think they've forgotten about us. I'm still here, but I'm just sitting in the corner, quietly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you sing us some soothing Muzak, just to kind of uh, help take the edge off? Muzak? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, failing takes me away you know what? I was, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. It I was wrong. could be. Is that... Good. Oh, it's beautiful. Is it something in the distance and the waves are far away? Why are white people so soothing? <laughs> they really... Legit. Legit. I don't know the words. I love that you had a medley ready to go. <laughs> Music. Uh, sing, sing me some Muzak is just a great, <laughs> great request right there. <laughs> that would be your first Dave Roll request, right? <laughs> <laughs> I paid you a hundred million goddamn dollars. You uh, sing me some fucking Muzak. Uh, is there a Muzak version of, of Stairway to Heaven? Uh, there's a music version I'm of sure everything. there is. There's, there's, got, to be. there's got to be. Uh, Listen, this just do right. it. You do it. What is that thing that Kenny G sings? Or his <laughs> instrument? <laughs> Oh, straight sax? Uh, straight sax. Tenor it's, sax. It's oh, it's a straight he, sax. Yeah, that, if you make yeah. any song that, that it's music. <laughs> <laughs> straight sax. Uh, yeah. No, we all Wait, had HBO straight, back in the day. Yeah. The straight sax is an uh, instrument from Dr. Seuss books, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Probably. I have a $100 million thing oh, to add to the fun pile, Please. which is that I've always wanted, this is such a weird thing. I love the outdoors and I love the idea of camping, but I don't like tents. So what I would want is like a nice camper, but small enough that I could drive it and not feel unsafe on the road. And then I would but want like somebody cars. to come along to drive. And so I could sleep in the back and then they would just go away. Oh. And then, and then I would sleep in the forest. Jen, you've got enough money. It can be self-driving. Super. Jen, I uh, had a hundred million dollars. No problem getting you that camper. Uh, just so you know, I also bought you a house, so you don't have to feel like you have to live in the camper. Oh, that's um, so nice. Thanks, Josh. I got you a driver. It's your favorite actor, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Come on oh, out. Oh, my God. Come on, Antonio. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is there is nowhere else to go from that in this episode. Thank you all for joining me in this wonderful episode of the Super Legit Podcast. Hyman, I think you've got some stuff to say. Oh, thank you, as always, to Matt Walker for our intro and outro music. This episode was hosted by Jet Kaufman, edited by Jet and Chris Sanders, and co-hosted by me, Michael Hyman. 
Every scene you heard today was improvised on the spot, along with some of the ads, with only a light touch of editing for your comfort. If you're loving what we're doing, pause real quick, write a five-star review wherever you're listening before you close the app, and tell your friends about us. Tonight's regular cast included Josh Spence, Chris Sanders, Sean Michael Boozer, Jen Burton, and Chris Compton, and our very special guest, Francis Collier. Woo-hoo! Francis, uh, do you want to mm-hmm. tell anyone about things you're doing and, and places to, to follow you and find you? And Absolutely. Your you can follow me at uh, Frangela.com. You can get all oh. your information about what I'm doing. I am putting that in the show notes. All right, that was uh, that was spectacular, everyone. Thank you again. Um, I can't wait to do another one of these episodes, and we look forward to having you back in the future, Francis. Yay, thank you for thank joining you us. So much. Yeah. It was so much fun. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got some bad news about the future. <laughs> no, it starts all over again. It's always uh, a circle. Time is a flat circle of shit. <laughs> Jet. Yes. Um. Yeah. Sam, there's. What's up? There's a couple of officers here from the government looking for a Mr. Spence saying he violated about a hundred million different copyright laws during this episode. <laughs> uh, just this episode alone? Yeah. Oh man, they uh they we're gonna have some trouble when they go through the back catalog. What took them so long? Jet. Jet. Yeah, yeah. We don't need another hero. <laughs> we don't need another way home. I don't know the third first, but we're beyond Thunderdome. You run Barter Town, baby! <laughs> I run Barter Town, Josh. And you're going to prison. Yeah! <laughs> I don't believe anything's on Oh my time. I kick the door on its hinges just so I can move. And that's our show. <laughs> so we are using Sanders' address, his home address now, as our corporate headquarters? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, good. Just wanted to verify. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I put on the uh, the public uh, domain registrar and everything, I figured. Or, or well, say. being a uh, just conventionally attractive white guy, they tend to just actually ring the doorbell and yeah. politely, polite. <laughs> politely yes. ask me questions. <laughs> yeah. No battery uh, by the way, or anything. Putting conventional attractive white guy on a business card. Is a great idea. Ooh, I'm doing that too. Uh, it sounds like we've given Josh the idea for this year's Christmas gift: unique business cards for everyone. I didn't actually. I didn't think about it till now. It, that's yes. Everybody's getting business cards. Everyone's getting. You really know what? Dumb I guess I will cards. need that time machine after all to go back to when <laughs> I could actually pass out a business card with a great oh, face. Those were the days.